Welcome to Basic Brewing Video. I'm James Spencer. I'm Steve Wilkes. We're brewing today. We sure are. What do you got? Well, we're brewing a Belgian wit. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But we're going to talk about brewing with spice. That's right. I brewed, and we are sampling, mm -hmm. a traditional English pale ale with a twist. And the twist is that I added cardamom, 15 to 20... Uh, seeds mm. of cardamom, so not the whole pod, just the seed, and two whole cloves to five gallons, not crunched up, not shaken, not ground, two whole cloves, mm -hmm. and the zest from two oranges. Mm. I also added, at Flame Out, 1.3 pounds of Oregon wildflower honey. Oh. So this is a very traditional bitter. Other than that, eight pounds of Maris Otter, some Belgian Munich and some Belgian Cara Munich. So you can take a basic style, like a, like a Maris Otter British yeah. bitter, yep. and spi literally spice it up a little mm -hmm. bit. Now, how did you settle on the spices that you used? I like the flavor. Well, I think that all three of these flavors go well together. Mm -hmm. I, uh, that's a long and a short answer. The long answer is you have to learn what the different spices taste like. You have to use them, you cook with them, you smell them, you taste them, you're always exploring these things. Um, I'd always wanted to use cardamom. It's a very pungent spice, mm -hmm. uh, very strong. So you want to be careful. I did some research. I read Randy Bozier's book. Mm -hmm. I uh, referenced lots of different threads over the internet that people talking about it. I heard and read about lots of horror stories <laughs> where people had used, well, I put 1.5 ounces in and I couldn't drink it. <laughs> so I, I gave it a lot of thought and I thought about it because it's used a lot in Danish uh, breads and, and cookies and things. It's, it's very common. And I thought how uh, meager they are. You know, you don't mm -hmm. use a lot of it. And I thought, so to be honest, I used the swag method. <laughs> you can put your own words there. And uh, I decided that about 20 grains would be enough, and the two cloves would be enough. I actually might have actually only used one if I did it mm. again. Um, and then uh, the orange is about right. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's not overly spiced. Right. Uh, it's not, if I were to taste this, I wouldn't immediately say, oh, that's a spice beer, that's a holiday beer. But there is enough of an interesting kind of depth to it uh, that makes it more interesting than just a uh, basic British bitter. Yeah, I agree. And that was my intent. I did not want to brew a holiday beer. I wanted to brew something actually that was uh, kind of spring-like, mm. that was, you know, really fresh flavors, really jelly beans the wrong word, but, you know, kind of that that Easter candy kind of a little sweetness, mm -hmm. and that was what I was after, and um, I think I achieved it. I don't. I hope it's you way agree. good. It's so. way good. And what was the yeast that you used? I just used well. I used uh, English ale White yeast? Labs uh, British ale yeast, oh, and go. I made a half gallon starter, and I pitched the whole half gallon. Mm. I just swirled it up and dumped it in. Well, it's very tasty. Thanks. We've got a beer. This is in uh, the making here. Yeah, we do. This is. Um, uh, we should mention, this is a Belgian wit, mm -hmm. and it's interesting timing that it, I decided to uh, do this beer at this time. I've been working on this beer for a couple of weeks, uh, but within the past week, uh, Pierre Sellis, the influential brewer, passed away, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe he was, I can't remember how old he was, but he, he lived a good long life, but he was the, the brewer who uh, did the original version of Hoogarden, the mm -hmm. Belgian wit beer. Mm -hmm. uh, he also brewed some in Austin, Texas, made some wonderful beers down there. Uh, so he's the man who revitalized, rescued that uh, Belgian wit style from history. So we will brew this in his honor today. That's right. So what we have here is kind of a twist. It's usually you brew a Belgian wit with half, uh, say half wheat and half barley. But uh, I'm trying to experiment today. This is a 100% wheat hmm. Belgian wit. So start out with 10 pounds of malted wheat. And you need malted wheat because you need the enzymes to uh, convert the sugars, mm -hmm. uh, the starches into sugars in the mash. 
And I did the brew in a bag method. And, uh, no stuck sparge? No stuck sparge. Don't have to worry about getting a stuck sparge with the wheat with brew in the bag. Uh, and then uh, got six and a half gallons of wort out of that. And uh, we added, brought that to a boil and added one ounce of East Kent Golding's pellets. And then uh, what we're going to do is uh, at the end of the boil here in just a minute, mm -hmm. I have an ounce of homegrown coriander seed. Uh, which is the seed from the cilantro plant that came out of our garden. Yeah. And I dried that uh, in a uh, paper grocery sack in the attic. And what Steve did to prepare it was he put it in the Ziploc bag and uh, you didn't grind it. I didn't turn it into flour. But you cracked it. Right. Uh, we just opened up the flavor. We just opened mm -hmm. the kernels up and it, it, it's just so much more floral. Right. It really made a difference. Boy. In the, in the, the smell of the uh, of the spice. It's lovely. And we're going to add uh, one, there's, so there's one ounce of that. We're also going to add one ounce of dried bitter orange peel that I got the homebrew shop mm -hmm. uh, in with that. We're going to put that in a little nylon bag at the end of the mm -hmm. boil, shut off the heat and take it in and cool it off. Uh, and then the yeast that we're going to use, I harvested from a bottle of Avery White Rascal, which is also a Belgian wit. Mm -hmm. uh, I like that beer a lot. But uh, rescued the yeast from the dregs of a bottle of that. And if you want to know how to do that, look at our Halloween episode. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what I did was I wound up with a quart starter and it settled, settled out and I poured off most of the beer off of that. And so we'll just pitch this into the wort mm -hmm. after it's done. It's interesting that you're using the dried bitter orange peel. Mm -hmm. In my beer, I use fresh orange peel. Right. So it's just, a, it, it, you can use either and, and you get a different result though. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see, uh, to compare the two. Now, when you were looking at your, how did you prepare your, your orange peel? Oh, I used a, I used a vegetable peeler. So I, I peeled the zest off. And then on the pieces that I got a little deep, you know, the, the white part, the pith, P-I-T, mm -hmm. P-I-T-H, that's very bitter. It doesn't taste good. So I just took the uh, flat of a knife and just kind of scraped it across until I took that off. Mm. So I ended up with nothing that wasn't orange in color. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And uh, the other thing that you want to do if you're using fresh oranges or any fresh fruit like that is be sure and, and wash it. Particularly oranges, a lot of times they'll come uh, and they may have a wax on them mm -hmm. to keep them fresh. Uh, these I happened to buy at an organic food store, so they probably didn't. But nonetheless, I, I just ran them under some cool water and just kind of rubbed them down a little bit. And that's all I did with them. I knew that they'd be sanitized, but I didn't want to put wax in there. And, mm -hmm. and you never know, you know, I don't know. It just made well, me feel better. Well, yeah. You need to wash your food. You need to wash your food. <laughs> so why don't we go ahead. Okay. And uh, you're going to show your technique of... Uh, so you're, you're, oh, you've opened the Ziploc bag there. I've opened the Ziploc bag. This is very technical, folks. <laughs> and I'm going to put the whole bag, or as much of it as I can get in there, inside the bag. Okay. And now I can dump it all out. And I don't have to worry about... I'm not pouring it loosely into the bag. Or, right. I do this right. with jars, too. Mm -hmm. I put the whole bag over the jar, then just dump the jar. And we're just going to go ahead and put the orange peel in there, too. Mm -hmm. And that, this little bag's got a zip. Oh, that smells good. Yeah, it does. Smell like coriander. It, this bag has got a little zipper on it. This is amazing. I love this. You can also do your delicates. <laughs> I think that's actually where it came from. <laughs> <laughs> now, go ahead and put it in go there. Put it in. And we'll make sure that it sinks. Now, I do this. I don't have a fancy bag like this because I just don't have a delicates bag. <laughs> but I do the same technique and in fact, with this beer, I used some cheesecloth, and I just cut a little square of, uh, of cheesecloth out, and I put mm -hmm. my uh, little adjuncty things, my little herbal things in that, and I just tied it up in a little bow. And so we so we turned off the heat, and uh, now we don't want to we don't want to boil away the volatile aromas right. and uh, flavors that are right. in the spices. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave you now, and we're going to go cool the wort. And uh, drink some beers. Yeah. And ho I hope that my beer turns out as well as uh, yours did. I'm sure it will. Cheers, everybody. Cheers and happy brewing. Come and visit us on the web 
At basicbrewing.com, you can find archive lists of both our audio and video podcasts on home brewing. You can also find our DVDs, extract brewing and partial mashing, stepping into all grain, low-tech lagering and decoction mashing, introduction to wine kits, and our 2011 Brewer's Logbook. Drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. Write to james at basicbrewing.com, steve at basicbrewing.com, or just use the contact form on basicbrewing.com. I'm writing a new screenplay, a musical. It's called Guys and Moyles. 